Blog Talk Radio. Tuned in to Music Mondays right here on Indie Fire with your girl Nakia. What's good, guys? How was your weekend? Mine was crazy, 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 crazy. Let me tell you something. I um, I, I've been locked up since COVID started, right? I mean, like I literally do not go out. I go to doctor's appointments. And I may go out, like, to Walmart maybe once a week. And, of course, you know, I got to get the nails done, like, every two weeks, right? Other than that, I do not go out. And so I've been trying to, you know, not let COVID completely take over and incorporate, you know, maybe some type of outing um, just so it doesn't completely take over, you know, every thought, but it's really hard to do that when you know the world is it's, it's shut down and you need to, you know, be mindful of everything that's going on. But this weekend was my daughter's 20th birthday and, you know, she wanted to go away and do some things with a few of her friends. And so the first time I've stayed in a hotel in almost a year, <laughs> yeah, scary. But we went, you know, away and and so we did. We stayed in a hotel, and it wasn't so bad. <laughs> and, you know, I have my cleaning supplies or whatever, but it wasn't so bad. And, you know, we did the whole shopping and, uh, you know, we eating out. And, okay, I'm sorry. No, I refused to eat out, ordered, takeaway type of thing. But um, I said all that to say, you know, I got an opportunity to spend some time with, with a uh, friend of mine from high school that I had not seen in forever. You know, and it was it was an amazing, just amazing time to be able to see someone that, you know, that we're not used to seeing. You know, I'm used to seeing the same four people, like, all the time. But we just just had a lot of fun just, you know, sitting back drinking and, and just reminiscing about, you know, how it was back in the day. And just it, it fleeted where we were at and, you know, just not really being mindful of the fact that, I'm up in age, and, you know, um, I'm suffering for it now. You know what I'm saying? Like, today I've been cold, like, all day. Like, my head wasn't fully covered. And so today I'm, like, feeling like an old lady, like, my bones hurt. And, and so now I'm looking at all the symptoms of COVID, like, oh, my gosh. You know, I know. Paranoia. Should have stayed my ass home, right? Yeah. <laughs> Guys, make sure that you're right back here tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have Jeff Carlson um, from the Jeff Carlson Band. Uh, you know that this month we're featuring a lot of heavy metal rock and roll artists. So, yes, we got a rock and roll band tomorrow night. I'm excited to have them here with us. Last week we had Corners of Sanctuary here. Um, amazing gentlemen. We had Nick um, and T with the Corners of Sanctuary here. So I'm excited to hear what rock and roll band, uh, Jeff Carlson band, what they're talking about. And then on Thursday, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to have urban fiction author V. Cole here. All right? A little edgy, a little edgy author. He's bringing us the LGBTQ side of urban fiction. So he's got a little raciness to his writing. All right? So I'm excited to hear what he's talking about. And then on Saturday, yes, 
Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Yours truly and my girl, Susie P. Newton. We got you. We got you. For all of you who don't acknowledge Valentine's Day, we got you. We got you on the annual Anti-Valentine's Day show. Yes, we're going to have some um, guests to join us. we got a few millennials that's going to stop by, talk to us how you know, and tell us about how they feel about that word called love. You know, they're going to share with us um, all about the relationships that they've gone through, you know, the feelings that they feel. And um, then I think we're going to have some gentlemen to come by as well, some older gentlemen, and give us their opinion. I see y'all got that loop <laughs> going on. <laughs> uh, let's play somebody else. Thank you. And so um, we're going to have some older gentlemen to stop by and just kind of give us their feedback on what these millennials have said, you know, um, and just, you know, because they're, they're a little more seasoned, you know, and maybe they can just offer their opinions um, and, and advice on, you know, what they've experienced as far as love is concerned and um, and all that good stuff, you know, because you know how me and Susie, Susie do, right? <laughs> Yeah, so if you can't make them all, please, please, please do not miss them all. What we have in the background, uh, Disposable, Mellow Makes Music. Um, yeah, that's my duo right there. Y'all check him out. Check him out. And then right here, you're listening to the Quasar, um, Trill Will. Yeah. Yeah, I learned something last week. Talking with this music in the background kind of mellows me out, you know? Mellows me out. Especially when I be about to get heated on some stuff like I am right about now. But I'm going to just, I'm going to hold off, you know. If you're just tuning in, you're live right here on Indie Fire for Music Monday. All right? <laughs> Let's see what I'm going to give you. I'm going to give you a little bit of this. Um, I'm actually sitting here waiting on our artist uh, for the evening to join us. Um, but as we wait, let's jump into his track. And you guys tell me what you think about it. All right? This right here is uh, EDF J with um, Out the Dirt. My clowns so I can roll with them. I put my heart up in my music and my soul in it. I cannot play with my heart, I'm too cold with it. Riding with my pole in it, gotta stay cold with it. You know, I gotta stay cold with it. Mm-hmm. I had to get up my clowns so I can roll with them. I put my heart up in my music and my soul in it. I cannot play with my heart, I'm too cold with it. Riding with my pole in it, gotta stay cold with it. I was just down on my ass and they ain't feed me Now they calling me and tell me that they need me I ain't never needed a soul, they cannot please me, yeah I know they need me, I can't even play on my music, I'm from the trenches Yeah, I see your bodies dropping, I'm a witness How can you just tell me you real and never meant it, yeah That's that fucking snake shit I'm just smoking on my pain away I'm just hoping God gon' take me for any rainy days I'm just smoking on my pain away I'm just hoping God gon' take me for any rainy days I had to get on my clouds so I could roll with them. I put my heart up in my music and my soul in it. I cannot play with my heart, I'm a too cold with it. Riding with my pole in it, gotta stay cold with it. I done see some niggas change from the sandbox. Where they gon' hate when they see the day I fucking pop. And I'm too far up in this shit, I do not wanna stop. Yeah. We going to the top. I told my bro that we gon' make it out of poverty. R.P. the old group J to save a spot for me And I'ma stack it to the ceiling like Monopoly I cannot go because they calling me the prodigy I cannot go because they calling me the prodigy Yeah, I know they watching me Cause I'm the prodigy, cause I'm the prodigy uh. I had to get up my clouds so I could roll with them I put my heart up in my music and my soul in it I cannot play with my heart, I'm almost too cold with it Riding with my pole in it, gotta stay cold with it I put my heart up in this song, I put my heart up in this song, eh. I put my heart up in this song, I put my heart up in this song, eh. I had to get on my clothes so I can roll with them, so I can roll with them, so I can roll with them.
Okay. All right. That's not bad. I really wish that I had this artist here to talk about um, Out the Dirt. I I like that. I actually like that. And interesting, um, some of the lyrics, um, I really wanted to jump into that because his bio, you know, what his bio states, but something that really stuck out to me, um, I can't even play with my music. I heard that in the first verse, and um, that, that that's so interesting that you state something like that in the song, Out the Dirt, and I get it. I get it. Um, but it's so important that, you know, you have this interview and, you know, you're talking about you can't even play with your music, but you're not even here for your interview. You know what I'm saying? And let me tell you a little about this artist, all right? Up-and-coming Brooklyn artist, uh, CDF Zay. Um, Grown Out Records introduces their new up-and-coming artist, Isaiah Hammonds, from um, Farrakhan Projects. He's a 17-year-old hip-hop artist, um, Helen from Brooklyn, New York. And like any young artist, he came from poverty. And Zay says he's just trying to make it out. He hopes that his music will allow him the opportunity to give back to the people around him. To Zay, music is a way to mentally release and a way to creatively express his feelings. He says that he makes music so that people can feel him in a good way. Um, I just feel like, and, and I really had a lot of questions to ask him. I wanted to really pick his head and, and see in the direction, you know, as a 17-year-old artist, you know, recently we had a 14-year-old artist on the show, and I just feel like um, with the millennials, you know, I want to make sure that I want to know where their head is. I want to know the reason why they're jumping into the industry, and I want to know what what's your game plan, you know what I'm saying? As a 17-year-old, you're probably, what, maybe 10th, 11th, 12th grade. I want to know what your game plan is if you don't make it in the industry. I want to know what your five-year plan is. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I want to know, and I know we've we dealt with a lot of Zone Out Records um, artists on the show. We've interviewed quite a few of them. Um, so I know they're coming from a good label, but I want to know what happens after you graduate. What's your five-year plan? Because, you know, this this is not only, you know, your music career, but outside of your music career, you, you have to have um, a life as well. So I want to know what your five-year plan is for your music career, but then for you as an individual as well. Like, these are the questions that I had for him. You know what I'm saying? Um, and as a developing artist, you know what I'm saying, who I know has got to be going through artist development, um, you're not just putting out the music. You have to have that game plan, you know what I'm saying, that, that five-year plan. Um, and let's start small, like we did with um, Shahi Franklin. Let's start a year. What's your plan for your, your music in a year? What's your plan for you as a young man in a year? You know what I'm saying? These are the questions that I want to ask you. And even if you don't jump on the line and you listen back to this interview, write this down. What's your plan for yourself in a year? And what's your plans for yourself as an artist in a year? All right? Um, something else I want to know, what is it with these young men? And and I see a lot of females do it as well, but um, I've noticed it a lot with the young men, with this middle finger thing, all right? Because, you know, we were trying to get the flyer together, and I wanted to go back and pull some more pictures um, just to be able to do something else with your flyer. And every single thing on Instagram, by the way, you want to stay connected with CDF Zay, you can check him out on Instagram at CDF underscore Zay, that's Z-A-Y. Follow him on Instagram. But, yeah, every single one of your pictures, my dude, you got your middle finger up. I really can't do a lot with that, all right? <laughs> Get on a photo shoot right quick. I know there's plenty of locations in VK that you can get a quick photo shoot. You know what I'm saying? Ain't even got to be legit, legit photo shoot. You know, you and your boys to run up with a nice, uh, cell phone, all right, with some good graffiti in the background. Get you one or two shots with that middle finger down. <laughs> yeah, just with some good promo, you know what I'm saying? Um, Because I couldn't get one good shot. Like, I couldn't even crop the finger down, you know? <laughs> I just want to know, what's the deal? What's the image that you're really trying to put forth to your fans? Um, 
I, I want to, I just want to know. I'm like, if you was here, I could get these questions answered. I can't even introduce you to my listening audience for real, but like I want to, because you're not here. These are the questions that I want to ask you, you know? Like, tell me, what are you working on? I've heard out the dirt, you know? I've been to your SoundCloud page, too. I like your vibe. I really do. Um, but I re- these are the questions that I want to I, I want to know. Like, who inspires your musical style? You know what I'm saying? Like, I really want to know more about you, but you're not here. I can't ask you. <laughs> I can't ask you. And we hope that your music will allow you to give back to um, the people around you. So I want to know... What are you doing right now? You know, as an up-and-coming artist, I understand what you want your music to be able to do. But even before your music can do that, what are you doing in your community right now? You a knucklehead just running the streets? Are you actually out there giving back to those people? How are you helping the people? It's got to start. You got to start in your community right now. Are you out there putting out the name CDF Day, letting them know, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm an up-and-coming artist. You know what? Get on this wave right now. Look for me in a year's time because I got this music coming out. And You know what I'm saying? What are you doing right now in your community to ensure that, you know, when you do get to the level that you hope to get to or even in a year's time, you know, you're able to give back to the people around you. You know, some, it ain't even got, it doesn't have to be nothing monetary, you know. Um, are you volunteering in your community? You can give back in that way. You know, what are you doing right now? So that they know who CDFJ is. These are the questions I would have asked you. But you're not here. It's all good. It's all good. Hey, I want to jump into some more new music because it is also New Music Monday. You know what? I don't know. Hold on. Let me see. I got a caller. This might be him. <laughs> Live on Music Mondays with Nakia. Who's on the line? Um, this is Top Flavor on the line. CDS Day couldn't make it. She's not feeling good. I'm here in his place. Oh, you know what? Look, you know what? I ain't over here talking smack or nothing. I'm really not. I'm not. Some information, you know, posing some questions like if he would have been here. But what's so important, something else that is so important that I've always stated, that if you can't show up, send somebody in your place. Look at there. And what he done? He sent somebody in his place. So again, who do we have on the line? We have Todd Favor. You got me on Instagram, Todd Favor three times, T Y F A Z O three X. He doesn't come up here and drop all his information up here. Ah, okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's up. And are you with Zone Out Records as well? Um, I'm yeah, I'm starting to just started. All right. All right, so I don't have any music for you, of course. I've already played CDF Days Out of the Dirt. Um, I've talked about, you know, his, I've given his bio. And um, so since I don't know too much about you, I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but I want you to briefly tell me a little bit about you, and then we're just going to go from there, all right? Um, I'm from Brooklyn, New York. Sorry, your project, downtown Brooklyn. All right. Um. I just, I just started rapping. Like, really, my first time in the studio was, like, two days ago. Oh. But I always, like, oh. been rapping when I was a kid, but I was not really taking serious. I just started now. I'm 16 years old. So two days ago, you just stepped in the studio two days ago. <laughs> just, just, just literally just that. <laughs> All right, so... Who inspires your musical style? 
who inspired me. Um, I wouldn't say nobody inspired me. I, like, I always just, I always just like music, making music, listening to music and stuff. But um, some artists that I I listen to a lot, artists like Lil Durk, Meek Mill, Polo G. I'm just now starting to listen to Lil Baby more because he's just been going up. Well, artists like those. Okay, and um, if you had the opportunity to perform with, I don't know, um, any one of those artists that you just named, um, and at any venue, once the world opened back up, what stage would you step on? Um, I don't know what stage. To be honest, I know the artist that I would pick is probably Lil Dirt. That's probably my favorite rapper out of all of them. What is it about Lil Dirt? I had a 14 year old on the show last week, and Lil Dirt was like, that was his idol. Like, uh, like every every song he he submitted three songs, and every song sounded <laughs> like Lil Dirt. Um, I don't know. Okay, so let's let's. Let's talk about, all right, you're 16. So let's talk about um, older, and especially from Brooklyn. Come on. Let's talk about older um, hip-hop and rap artists. Who do you admire? Who do you look up to? Your style has to, you have um, to. I like, I like 50. Speak, you, okay. He did. All right, that's a little better. That's a little better. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so with that being said, yeah. um, what about Pop Smoke? Did you, did you list Pop Smoke? Did you say Pop Smoke? Yeah, pop, yeah, pop smoke is like, I like I like pop smoke music. Yeah, you but, like pop um, smoke, okay. Yeah, I I like his music, but I'm not like I would say I listen to him the most. I I most I mostly listen to Lil Durk. I still like the pop smoke music. Okay. Like, he's a good rapper. Okay, yeah. yeah. All right, so yeah, I can I can I think we can hang out now. We can hang out together now. I'm not really <laughs> feeling Lil Durk. Um, but yeah, you said pop smoke, you said fifty, so yeah, we can we can hang out now. Nah, All right, so what was it like for you when you first stepped into the studio? I know that maybe you've been, you know, as a young adult or uh, as a teenager, young adult, you know, you have um you may you may have had the aspirations, you know, um and you said to yourself one day, you know, hey, this is what I wanna do you know, I mean, then all of a sudden, here you are two days ago and you're in the studio, you know, all of a sudden it's a reality for you. What was that experience like, stepping into the studio? Um, it's, it's lit, like, it's lit. You just see, see it, you just think about all the stuff that you can do, all the bars, everything just, just in your head. And then um, another thing about it, stepping in the studio for the first time, time goes by so fast. Like, I never... I never knew, like, this is how you make a song inside the studio. You got to take pauses. Usually I would just rap the whole song out. You got to take pauses. Let the, um, <clears throat> the guy that's on the computer do what he got to do to make it fit your tune. It's, it's, just, right. it's a bunch of stuff. It's a whole a whole different thing. to just rap and freestyle and stuff. It's a whole different experience. So you've probably seen shows like maybe I don't know Empire where yeah, you've see. seen them in the you know, you've seen them in the studio, you've seen how they produce, you've seen how they put together a track. Was that experience true to life for you or was it something more mind blowing? It's a it's a whole different thing when you when you're the person that's inside the booth inside the studio. Like it's a feeling that you just gotta experience yourself. And so what's what's next for you? I do have a track. Your people move fast. They really do. I do have a track. Uh, we're gonna play it in just a minute. I think my people are trying to get it um, queued up for me to play. Uh, but what's next for you? Are you working on more music? Uh, yeah, more studio time, more music on the way, just writing and perfecting my craft, finding myself. That track that you had, that was right. I was like my first track. I was just 
chilling on it. But yeah, I'm gonna find my sound and be able to produce better music and put it out there for all my fans. And so I'm going to ask a question of you that I would have asked of CDFZ. Um, and because you're so young, you know, and you're just really stepping into this, you know, as, as young adults, we have to have a game plan. Um, music is, you know, is your aspiration, and that's, that's what you want to do. But you have to have something to fall back on just in case music doesn't work out for you. You know, so realistically, um, if music doesn't work, you know, do you have a game plan? Like, where do you see yourself in five years um, if music doesn't work for you? If it doesn't work. Um, I'm staying in school. Yeah, I have a yes. game plan. I, I plan on going to college. <laughs> okay. Yeah, if music doesn't work, I want to go to college, try to start my own business. Either, either way, if music works or if it doesn't work, I'm going to be an entrepreneur and start my own business. This music is just gonna make even more money for me to do that and invest in more stuff. But yeah, the plan is have your own business, not working for nobody. Be your own boss. Yes. That's what I was. Yes, and you, you know now as um as a young adult, you know the importance of knowing the ins and out of the music industry. Correct. You know that it's just not stepping into the studio, um, putting down the track or or sitting up all night writing, you know, the lyrics to the song, you know that you need to know the music industry, the, the business side of the music industry. You know that. You know the importance of that, yeah? Yes. It's a lot of work to be done. You got to advertise yourself, make friends, know somebody that knows somebody. There's a lot of stuff into it. Yeah, so many people. artists jump into this and all they know is, you know what, I want to be that artist that writes this banging track, you know what I'm saying, I want to be the best performer, the best entertainer, I want to step into the studio, you know, lay down this fire track, and, and that's it, and they don't realize that I need to know, you know, all about the contracts, and I need to know about distribution, and they leave it up to managers, and they leave it up to A&Rs to, to do everything behind the scenes, um, and they need to be a part of their entire music career. They need to know all aspects of the, you know, the music industry. Um, so just coming in, you know, yeah, you need to make sure that you know all of that. And so as an entrepreneur, um, one who uh, is diving into this, um, I just need to know information, I feel. It's so important. When I jumped into this many, 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 many years ago, um, stuff changed. You know, it may change every three days. Information changed every three days. And then, you know, as time went on, information changed, you know, every day. And then all of a sudden, it was every hour. And now, you know, every 10 minutes, something is changing. <laughs> so it is important that you stay abreast of everything that goes on in this industry. So, yeah, you got your head on. You got your head on. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you another question that I would have asked um, CDFJ. And this is, I don't think it's really music related, but it's something I want to know. You know, I'm an old head. And so I just, I want to know the answer to the question. What is it with um, you, you young guys now and the middle finger? What's the, the, so significant about the middle finger? Now I knew you know, how it was when I was young, and I knew what it <laughs> signified. You know what I'm saying? And even my mother's era, like, I knew what it signified when people, you know, gave somebody the middle finger. But it's like, I went to his page, and I was trying to pull up pictures, you know, for promotion for the show, and every single shot, it was the middle finger. And I'm like, you know what? I really can't. I have a platform, and I have a listening audience. I have, you know what I'm saying? I got a I, when I'm trying to do promo, I got people looking at me, and I don't want them to be like, well, what's wrong with this guest right here? He got the middle finger up, you know what I'm saying? Before they look and see that he's 17, and oh, well, you know, that's what 17 girls, you know, that's what they do now, you know what I'm saying? But I just want to know, what's the deal with the middle finger? What does it represent? Um, now, the real thing don't represent nothing really, no more. Like, it's not me saying that's the world or anything. Um, 
that's I, I just the way now. They change all the time. And I guess people just going to have to adapt to the way the new generation lives. But it's not dissing nobody or nothing. So the world needs to adapt to the younger generation. That's what you're saying. Yeah. I feel like I feel like people need to just start understanding because a lot of stuff ain't changing. It's just gonna keep growing and expanding. It's like people had to adapt to all these what you call it, gay people coming out. It started being broadcasted on T V and live television and stuff. That that wasn't normal before but people just had to adapt and now that's the new norm. Stuff like that is just I... not changing. I mean, I mean it's always new waves whenever a new generation comes out, stuff that I guess look good to that specific generation, and I guess that's just gonna keep spinning, going, you no know, changing it. All right, I feel you. I feel you. All right, we're still, we're having a little technical difficulties with your track. I'm still trying to, or they're still trying to get the track loaded. So, um, let me ask you: How do you want when you start to, you know, really make moves and uh, your name gets out there? How do you want fans to really remember you? You know, you 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 end the performance at the end of the night, and they're like, you know, your name is out there. And they're like, wow, you know what I'm saying? This kid really put it down. Um, what's the impression that you want to leave upon them at the end of the night? Um, I want them to to feel all my words. My story, everything that I put out, in my music. I want them to sit back and just say, like, this kid really spend that pain. So a lot of my music that's still coming out is pain music. But I mean, I'm an artist. I do it all. I rap, sing, all that. I just want them to just see me for the artist that I am and the greatness that I'm going to put out to the world and all my music. This, this, his, his bio kind of stated the same thing. And, the the fourteen year old I had on the show last week said the same thing. His music was about um pain as well. Is this becoming a new genre, uh, kind of an unspoken genre for for this this I don't wanna say millennials, but um I just I don't know. Um Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the way right now, but that's it's, it's been a way. Everybody, everybody wants music. They can just sit back, not always have to hear rapping, cursing, drill music. Just sit back and just listen to somebody talk and relate to his problems or stuff that he experiences in his life. People want people that's really venting on in their music, venting on their track, and just doing it with a melody, creating a, a re- real music, a real song. Because anybody can just sit here, diss people, make a drill song, talk about gu- drugs, money, and guns, but a lot of people can't. Televise their pain in a song and make it sound good. But that's the way. That's why Lil Durk is so big. Because his music, straight pain music. Well, he he has drill music too that like he calls No Auto. But yeah, he spits that pain. That's why he's such a big rapper that he is right now. And that has me so concerned because. Kids at 14, 15, 16, 17 should not be experiencing all this type of pain. I believe in mental release. I believe in emotional release. I believe, well, not physical release, but mental and and emotional release because nobody should keep anything bottled up in them. And I feel like writing you know, poetry, um, that is the best way for someone to be able to creatively express themselves and get that pent-up rage out of them. But for children so young, and young adults, you know, teenagers so young to be going through all of this, and and it's horrible. I, it, 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 it's horrible. Um, but creatively, I've heard some of the best music from so many young, you know, musically gifted minds because of 
the pain that they're going through. Um, what do you hope that your music is able to um, do, or or I hope she will. I hope people are able to bring about to what change. What change do you want your music to be able to bring about for other individuals, not just kids your age? You know what I'm saying? Because you yeah. can't. You can have a target market or a base market, but other people are going to hear your music. You know what I'm saying? Because some 16 year old parent may hear your music, and it might affect them. So, what change do you want to bring about in other people's lives when they hear your music? Um, I want them to feel a sense like they can relate to me. Like, like they're not alone. Like a lot of people go, a lot of people go to certain struggles in life that they don't want to talk about, and that they don't put out to the world. But I want people to hear my music and listen to stuff that I'm saying and feel that they're not alone. Other people going through the same stuff. Everything that they're going through is normal. The stuff that they're going through is not the end of the world. I want people to listen to my, all, all of my music and understand what I'm saying. And look at the bigger picture, not just not just the words, but it's just the how could I say the poetry between the music and all the lyrics. I want them to feel a sense of understanding and relation to my music and everything I say. But it was, I'm also going to produce lit music so that you can dance with stuff. But I just want everybody, I want everybody to feel a positive reflection from my music too, as well. I love that. I love it. Um, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get your track um, tonight. Um, that doesn't mean we won't get it in rotation um, because Mondays is New Music Monday, so we're definitely going to get it in rotation. I'm not sure. I think maybe the platform is actually having some technical difficulties because we're trying to get it loaded um, in three different locations and we can't get it um, loaded. Um, so what piece of advice have you received from someone in the music industry um, thus far that you feel has been the most valuable to your music career? Um, I haven't received any piece of advice from anybody personally, but I listen, I listen to a lot of rappers, watch their interviews and stuff, and just take advice, little stuff like it's, it's always going to be hate. But you just got to persevere through all of it. It's always going to be people telling you what you're doing is bad, what you're doing is good, but it's negative and positive energy when it comes to everything. And you just got to first wear through it all, let some of the negative energy bounce off you, but still take it into consideration and just go harder, do better. You got to do it for yourself. You can't do it for the people that's around you. Well, that, that that's good advice right there. Um, and I think if you not only apply that to your career as an artist, but if you make that applicable to your life, you know, as a young man, um, you're going to be very prosperous and you're going to go far. Um, and the guidance and the inspiration um, that you're getting from Zone Out Records as well. Um, soak all of that in. You know what I'm saying? You you seem to be very level-headed and have, you know, um, said I wish I would have had the opportunity. It's great how um, technology, well, not, not technology for this platform tonight, but it's great how technology works, you know, because I have my assistants who they're talking with um, your people now. And so it's great how, and then they're shooting messages to me. So it's great how all of this is working together, except for music um, tonight. And so, guys, again, we're going to get to his music in rotation uh, on, or in rotation for New Music Mondays on next Monday. Um, if you want to call in next Monday, uh, <laughs> just to shout yourself out, uh, introduce your music, uh, you can do that as well. Um, I don't have a problem with that. Um, but I love how you were able to fill in uh, at, at a pivotal moment, you know what I'm saying, because we were just not not, not dragging CDF Day, but, you know, how I always say that it's important, you know, that you just show up and be where you need to be. And if you can't be there, then send somebody. And Zone Out Records, you know, um, they're, they're 
amazing um, about just, just standing true um, to themselves and standing behind the artist. So I love the fact that they were able to um, send somebody um, uh, for representation for the label. Um, and I do hope that, you know, CDF Day does get better um, and we will have him back on the show at a later date. Um, Ty Fazo, you want to go ahead and drop your uh, social media again so that the listening audience can get over there and follow you on Instagram. Also let them know how they can um, listen to your music. I think we have Fake Love. I'm not sure what else you have put out, but if you do have any more music put out, how they can follow you, get the music on the show. Boys, now you want to get all of your content um, information out now. My Instagram for sure is Tafazo three times. T-Y-F-A-Z-O three times. I'm going to be posting all of my music, all the tracks coming soon on that page. All right, guys, and you can also follow the label on Instagram. It's zone out underscore records. You can follow the label on Facebook. It's zone out records. And you can follow the label on Twitter. It's zone out underscore E N T. All right, guys, again, on Monday, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, next Monday, we will uh, have Fake Love in rotation here on Indie Fire. All right? Again, thank you so much right, for stopping by, tapping it up with me. I have truly appreciated you being here with me this evening. Your family, now, once you're on the show, you're always family. You're welcome back at any time. So we got to officially bring you back and, you know, get your bio on, um, get you, you know, you do some promo for you, get you on the show. Um, once you get some more music out, you know what I'm saying, we'll have you back on the show as well. All right, guys, make sure that you're back here tomorrow night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern, uh, Eastern Standard Time. We'll have Jeff Carlson of the Jeff Carlson Band here. Then on 6.30 p.m. Thursday, Eastern Standard Time, um, Urban Fiction author V. Cole is going to be here. And then Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, the Anti-Valentine's Day show hosted by yours truly and your girl, Susie P. Newton, uh, on the ones and twos. I can't wait. Can't wait, guys. If you can't join us for all the shows, please, please, please do not miss them all. All right? <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys with our uh, our Black History Month song, it seems to be. This is uh, Black Matter Freestyle. With your girl out of the BX, brown skin, Quinn. You guys have a good night. Mommy, it is true what you taught me. People fear what they don't understand. And they hate what they can't conquer. (laughs) Black lives matter, all glass shatters. But I'm built like a brick house and climbing a ladder of success. Putting all my head to rest. I like to stay to myself so that I can stress less. I'm strong like the rock mentally, but I got muscle. I speak for Dr. Sebi and Nipsey, so I hustle. I got two kids to feed. You know I love you. I'm talking to my babies. My babies, that's why I bubble. The world's filled with trouble. My guns say cock. I'm cold. So when it's beat, I ain't calling the cops. Underestimate me and end up under six feet. I'm dangerous. I'm in the game and I'm ready to cheat. I do it for Breonna Taylor and George Floyd. I do it for the trade on the month. I'm raising black boys. Pain is what you speak. Then I'm a major. Books filled with false education. I do it for Brianna Taylor.